This message goes out to all my cinnamon muffins, all the earthlings of planet Earth. This is your warlord of weird, Sinbodi, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Sin Bodhi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Tremendous. Thank you for taking the time to have a chat. You're welcome. So we are here at CWF in Niagara, where you're about to step into the ring. You're calculating that, making yeah, sure I'm it's just right. Do my ABC. Yep, CWF. That sounds about right. Niagara Falls, <laughs> Canada, Earth, Milky Way. Gotcha. I'm here. Got it all. Bam. You ready for what's to come? Heck yeah, I'm ready for what's to come. Yeah. I believe I am wrestling the sniper who I have known and have never wrestled. Actually, that's a lie. We wrestled, I want to say it was about 100 years ago. I could be off by a year or two. A year or two. Um, when I first was starting, he was not too far behind me. Maybe I was in my first year or two, and he was just starting, and we, we locked horns once or twice. So I think it will be interesting to see us as now the, the boy is a man, so to speak. <laughs> I think that will be fun. So. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It'll be a lot of fun. It's cool to be up here in front of my fellow snow Mexicans after a long time away. <laughs> That'll be pretty awesome. And uh, so I'm feeling froggy and I'm ready to play. Well, the freak show element of yourself isn't just super important in the wrestling, but also just your entire life. So what first got you into that? What opened the door? Uh, I always get guys saying, oh, I like your gimmick. And I kind of giggle. It's and not go, a gimmick. That's well, you. Well, yeah, what gimmick are you talking <laughs> about? Um, I've always been enamored with the circus as much as pro wrestling. Even when I was a little kid, you know, I was stuck in a little farmhouse and I spent a lot of time by myself and I had a head in a comic book or my face in front of a TV. And so it was pro wrestling and superheroes and circus and all that stuff was all sort of pro wrestling and sideshow and circus was sort of the real life version of the comic book. So it all sort of tied together creatively and I'm an artsy fartsy kind of a guy. So I think that's how my little hamster in my wheel started spinning. And I just, I like that direction and I, I really like the whole nomadic Think for myself, don't be a sheep, follow your dreams. Even if people say you're too small, you're too this, you're too that, what do they know? You also have your own promotion federation, just kind of sticking to doing whatever you want sure. and going your own route called Freak Show Wrestling. Yes, ma'am. And the thing very cool about it is not just wrestling, there's also magicians, you have musicians. Mm -hmm. So it's all over the place, and I love that fact about yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster. It's sideshow, magic, comedy, wrestling, just you name it. It's everything I want it to be. Everything that's, again, flying out of this hamster on his wheel and it's smoking you can see the steam coming out I don't know if you could edit <laughs> out the out steam coming ears. out of my ears but yeah <laughs> and so it's just a lot of fun um in some ways it's really funny some ways it's sexy some ways it's scary and in some ways it's a farce in some ways it's a lot of things that i don't like about wrestling or life or what have you and it just pokes fun at some stuff lets you know to have a good time and not take things so seriously was it tricky to make all of those different elements work so flawlessly not when you're stuck in this brain <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> Um, no, I've got a great group of uh, performers and friends in Las Vegas and next door to Las Vegas. Guys and girls come in all the way from, you know, from San Francisco, Phoenix, San Diego, L.A. and further, you know, guys fly in and uh, to do the show. A lot of my road buddies, you know, like Boogeyman and Gangrel and John Morrison, just tons of guys have, have showcased the show. Jake the Snake Roberts has been on the show, which was super cool. We had him wrestle a gay Nazi. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you said before. Cameraman's giggling. How good is it that we made the cameraman giggle? <laughs> That's pretty good. When you yeah. get to that He's level, like, there's this straight face. You did yeah. a good job. <laughs> <laughs> you said something that I love, and that is that your milkshakes bring all the freaks to the yard. It's damn skippy. It sure does. <laughs> it absolutely does. The thing that I love about that is it really does make me feel like you fear nothing. So I was wondering, is there anything that does freak you out? Oh, boy. Well, you know, when sin has to deal with real life, you know, that's the scary part. But, you know when you live with your head in the sky and your dreams are, you know, filling up your days, you know, I try to treat every day somewhere between Halloween and Christmas, you know, so I think if you live your life a certain way, you don't have to be in clown painting, you have to be a silly character or wrestler or whatever, you can just take life by the horns and have at it. Well, I want to talk tattoos with you because you not only have a lot of really cool ones, but you also do your own tattoos, you're a tattoo I artist. I do. So what is the last one that you got? Oh boy, I... I guess it would have to be my brains, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> Think that angle's pretty good? Yeah, bam. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, almost a year ago, we did a match at Freak Show Wrestling in Vegas. Uh, me and PJ Black and Brutus Beefcake was the guest ref, and we did nice. a Locks of Love haircut match. And it was something I wanted to do for a long time. I have... Uh, you know, I've had the experience of going into the you know kids' hospitals and doing the charity stuff, and man, my heart just breaks. I mean, I don't mind beating up a grown ass human, 
but kids and animals and all that nice. stuff, man, I just hold them on such a pedestal. I saw that, uh, not to sort of change topics because I don't want to, you know, Go whatever, but I saw, I, it was driving me nuts. I was even telling my, my dad because I'm visiting, you know, I'm up here and doing a show while I'm visiting my parents. Being a bad son, being at a wrestling show while I'm supposed <laughs> to be visiting my parents. And I saw that thing about some idiot had set a baby raccoon on fire oh, no. and he was, it was on the news and it drove me nuts. And I just thought, man, I wouldn't in real life, I would never choose to hurt a fly, no. but I think I would lose absolutely no sleep setting that guy on fire. Yeah, I can so, completely agree with that. Yeah, But so back to point of, of the locks of love is, uh, you know, I've seen some pretty horrific things. I've seen some pretty wonderful things, but I've seen some pretty horrific things in my travels. It's very humbling and very you know, it, it puts you in your place in the universe. And me personally, I have a friend of mine, another guy that taught me a lot in wrestling back in the day, another independent wrestler. Not a lot of people would know who he was, but he was super talented and he was one of those woulda, shoulda, coulda guys just kind of fell through the cracks. And, um, his stepson has constantly been fighting with a uh, brain tumor. And I just, I wanted to do something cool for just that whole, you know, locks of love thing and I, I just I think of him all the time and I thought man I want to do something good for that kid because that kid is super brave and I remember visiting him in the hospital and you know I could put a poker face on no problem there's not a lot of things that scare me but my heart just broke when I saw him and I had to smile and just it was the hardest thing to fake a smile to be like buddy chicks dig scars don't sweat it you know blah 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 and I just I mean I've lived a hundred lives in this time. I mean, life has really been good to me. I would have, if I could wave a magic wand, I would gladly take his burden. You know, he's such a good kid. It always happens to the really, really good kids. You know, it doesn't happen to the, the dickheads. It happens to the good kids. So, so this one's for you, Nate. I appreciate you sharing that. I really You're do. Welcome. And office, obviously you have a lot of tattoos on, sorry, I'm like teary. <laughs> I, I am too. I'm, I'm trying to not. Um, I've, I've got to wrestle a grown man. I've got to get mean. Gotta get get mean. ready. Got to get mean. Got to get mean. Obviously, you have a lot of tattoos. Uh, were you a little bit? I have one. It's just really big. <laughs> it's just all merged it's into one merged, now. Is that yeah. how you look at it? Yes. Yeah, people ask me, how many? I'm like, just one. one. Was there any apprehension getting the first one? How long ago was that? A lot. A uh, hundred years ago. I think I was just a fresh 17, scared little kid. I went into this big, scary biker tattoo place and picked this dumb little thing off the wall. It was like a little one of those Casper the Ghost Devils. I had a shotgun and diapers and a little fedora and I just picked it off the wall and the biker was really mean and really scary and I just kind of thought, I don't want to be like that when I grew up. I want to, you know, be nice. I don't mind being mean to my opponents, but I would like to be nice. I think that was one of those weird pivotal things where I, it set in my brains. So that's what I think about when I think of that tattoo. And when I do give tattoos, I want people to have fun. I want to almost be like a bartender where I'm laughing and joking okay. and let the process go by easy and I try to be as gentle and as quick as possible without rushing, but I, I try to work as quickly so they're not being as tortured for as long a period of time. And, and I just thought, I don't want people to walk away going, oh man, that guy was a jerk. I want people to of go, course. oh, he was nice. He was cool. He put good art on me. You want them to come back yeah. as well. And yeah, repeat business <laughs> is always nice for sure. Now, I not only interview wrestlers, but I also interview musicians. So I was wondering, have you done any music-related tattoos on people? Any that stick out to you? Um, I have ta Who did I tattoo? Uh, I put a little... I was actually... Uh, this was actually funny. I was supposed to tattoo Avril Lavigne. Really? And we were kind of, you know, we were getting along. And then the other tattoo guy, the, the senior guy in the shop at the time was kind of butthurt that he wasn't going to do it. So he piped up. So I, we both sort of said, all right, go have at it. Um, I think I tattooed DJ Polly D. I tattooed Polly D. Does he count as a musician? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Slide. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, borderline. Um, but I've tattooed lots of like, you know, wrestlers and other musicians that maybe you've never heard of. I don't know, but just different people on the way. Yeah. Tattooed my share of humans. So some of them awesome. I'm sure play instruments. I'm sure. Well, you soon have to get into the ring, so just to wrap things up, anything you would like to say to your fans who will be viewing? Oh, boy. Um, what I would like to say, words of wisdom from the clown, <laughs> from your warlord of weird. Uh, look both ways before you cross the street while running on thin ice with scissors. Be very careful. Uh, if you want to talk to me, you can find me on social media at Sinbodhi, S-I-N-N, Bodhi like the tree. I do respond to my fans, which is weird. People go, oh, you respond. A lot of guys don't respond, and I... I think that's kind of bizarre. I'm like, if you want to talk to me, why wouldn't I? I'm I put proof. My... I reached out to him, responded, and now we're sitting here. Shazam. So. Well, I just think, you know, I put my pants on one spandex leg at a time. I'm going <laughs> to, why wouldn't I be, why am I too good to talk to somebody that wants to talk to me? You know, it's good. So. I love that outlook. Just thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome, darling. Thank and you. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya. <laughs>